This is my Precision Matthews PM1228 lathe with factory installed DRO. The way they installed this DRO scale, I can't get to the locking mechanism for the carriage in either direction. Not only can I easily fix this, I think I can make it better. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is the carriage on my PM1228. I've used this lathe to make a few parts, but I'm still getting familiar with the machine. The other day I was trying to figure out how to lock the carriage in both directions. Upon further inspection, I discovered there is a tiny little set screw down between the scale for the DRO and the carriage that is set up to tighten and lock it in this direction. The problem is, it's a socket head cap screw that actually fits into the body of the carriage. And that means if we get anywhere from here down, where the lower mounting part for the reader for the scale is, you can't get an Allen wrench in there to tighten it. And more often than not, that's exactly where you're gonna be when you are trying to lock down the carriage. And then there's the other direction. I could not find it, I kept looking, wasn't sure where it was, and finally I did what anyone should do in this situation, and that's revert to the manual. This lathe has a pretty good manual, so I pulled it up, and sure enough, I found exactly where the lock is supposed to be. See that bolt right there? That is a gib adjustment. And if you go to the other side, there is another gib adjustment. Directly underneath the scale is the lock. I went to the section that shows installing a DRO, and it mentions that both the socket head cap screw that lock the carriage in this direction and lock the carriage in this direction need to be replaced with a hex head so that you can get a wrench underneath there or get a wrench in between to be able to tighten those locks. This DRO was installed on the machine when I got it. And both locks are still a socket head cap screw. Ultimately, I'm not a big fan of the technique of trying to get a wrench in under there and if it's not quite in the right spot, I, I don't like that. I don't like flying blind. I don't like not being able to get to it easily. Same thing with going this direction. And since I have to remove this anyway, to get to those cap screws to replace them, why not set this up a little bit differently? All I have to do is create some spacers and move the scale out about half an inch. And in doing so, that will allow me to fit a shortened Allen wrench in between the scale and the carriage to lock the Y travel. And it should give me access from the top to be able to lock the X travel. So the first thing I got to do is get it all taken apart. Start by pulling the scale cover off. Next, we need to remove the scale and it's basically attached by four bolts. I've got one here, I've got one here for the scale itself, and then there are two bolts attaching this bracket to the scale reader. There's no way for me to remove the bracket directly to the scale reader because the bolts would go down into the bed of the lathe, so I have to get under there and remove the entire bracket as an assembly. Now, part of the reason I had this factory installed is magnetic scales are a little more temperamental as far as making sure that the reader and the scale itself are running parallel and have the correct spacing. It's not something that I'm incapable of doing. I can totally set it up, but it takes time. And it just made sense to me at the time to get it pre-installed and be done with it. 
Of course, now I'll have to go through and recalibrate, get all that properly set up when I put all this back together after I have spaced it out properly. After removing it, I found that to properly align everything, it was shimmed. And two washers spacing out the lower mounting bracket from the carriage. Good to note all that information so as to more easily put it all back together when the time comes. All right, you can now clearly see where the carriage locking bolt is. And you can see that if it had been replaced as it should have been with a hex head, a person could easily get in here with a wrench and tighten it. Again, same thing on this bolt down here. It was supposed to be replaced before the DRO was installed, but whoever was assembling this unit that day apparently forgot to do so. Right down there, you can see that this hole is slotted this direction, and this hole is slotted this direction to give you a little bit of adjustability. Again, if you were to put a magnetic base on this and run a dial indicator across this top, you want it to be traveling totally level. All right, let's measure these spacers. We got three, eight, seven. I got three, nine, one. So that might explain why we also had the shims that were used after the fact. These look to be rough cut with probably a bandsaw and not nicely machined. I will end up machining nice standoffs that are the exact same size. So hopefully we don't have to deal with shims, at least not as many. And now you can see it. This is the socket head cap screw that tightens the carriage in this direction. And that's the socket head cap screw that tightens the carriage in this direction. So as I make these standoffs, they need to be precise in that they are the same size, but they don't need to be precise in exactly how far they come out. I can make them a little bit long or a little bit short as long as I can get down in there with an Allen head wrench and be able to tighten them down. Looks like my measurement is about seven eighths of an inch. So there is the spacers that were originally on the machine. Let's see if we can do a little machining. I could have taken the time to show you the machining here, but who wants to watch that? All I did was cleaned up the finish on the outside, cut them to length, faced them so that I had the exact dimensions I was looking for, and drilled holes in the middle. The big ones are right around 7 eighths of an inch, and the little ones are fairly close to half an inch. Now again, I could show you me setting this up on the lathe and the process involved, as in using a dial indicator to make sure everything is running true. But the reality of it is there are lots of good videos on YouTube already showing you how to set up a DRO. So I think I'm just going to give you a little snippet of it in time lapse. Actually installing the scale is going to be a little bit more challenging because I need to get the bolt into the bracket, the spacer onto the bolt, and then I need to get it tightened down all while holding it in place. First one was fairly easy. The second one requires a little more ingenuity. I'm going to just get the spacer down in this bracket. All right, I have both of those started. 
Now we can go ahead and gently slide the scale and get it into position. Because I aligned the bracket first, almost no adjustment was needed for the scale. When I did the bracket, it was originally off by like 30 thousandths, and I got it down to basically less than a thousandth. But then when I installed the scale, I was less than five thousandths from end to end, and that was an easy adjustment. On DROs that I've installed in the past, they come with a plastic spacer to correctly space the scale reader from the scale. I can only assume that these scales did in fact come with that, but when it was installed, they were probably thrown away. So I'm just going to try and get it as close to parallel with the scale as I can. It's not that critical because it'll be in a fixed position and the scale will be in a fixed position and the scale is running true. So the readings should be accurate. Got it all back together. I've verified that the readings I'm getting on the DRO are the same as the readings I'm getting on the dial. And overall, I think it turned out great. If I want to tighten the carriage in the Y-axis, I simply use this shortened Allen wrench, put it in the socket head cap screw, tighten it down, we're locked in place. And now if I need to tighten the main carriage lock, in here with this allen wrench tighten it down and we are locked into place so really i'm not disappointed with precision matthews the fact that this was installed without changing out those bolts for hex head bolts we've all had bad days at work and times where we just forget to do stuff overall i'm actually glad it happened because I do like the Allen wrench setup way better than trying to get in there with a wrench. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments, and I would love to answer those for you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.